Hi, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, uh, welcome. My name is Lori. This is my little channel where I share all things planning, crafting, and Disney related. Um, this is my second update to my craft room. It's the second kind of craft room makeover, and this is actually part two of that second craft room makeover. It was um, a couple of days worth of work, so I broke this up into two videos so you didn't have one super long video. Um, but I'm really glad that you're here. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for being a part of this channel. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for all your feedback. So I really appreciate having you here. Um, just to kind of catch everyone up to make sure that we're on the same page and you know what's happening here. Um, I've already moved the two small Ikea tables in the front and I added that small Ikea wire um, storage unit in between the, um, the two tables. And um, I actually really like that. And I'm kind of like, I can't believe that I haven't done that before. So I, I still, as I look at it, I keep thinking, why have I never done that before? Um, I just took the legs off and added that. And so that's perfect. I have two little stations there. And you'll see in the final reveal that this is actually the way I have it set up. Um, and I did this for a purpose. I wanted to have a bigger workspace. I wanted to have an area where I could also take pictures of my final products. And um, I really, really like it. So right now I'm setting up my desk that houses my computer. I'm setting that back up. Um, I actually moved that. It was against the window and I moved it and I really like it against this wall. Um, you'll see right now that I actually have some of my Cricut mats on the wall and um, my heat press mat against the wall as well. I do end up moving those and I'll show you where those end up um, going. I was very happy with my creative storage solutions for those. But other than that, the wall was still really functional, so very happy with it. Um, I went into this craft room redo or kind of like touch up, to really thinking that I didn't want to move anything. Like I, I wanted to move as little as possible. So my thought was that I could move those big cubes that I have in the back, just shift them to the side, maybe move that small little cube on the left side um, and add it over there. But I realized that I just didn't like the way it looked. It looked, you know, it didn't look even, it looked a little cluttered. And so I do end up flipping those completely, but you'll see my process. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play some music. I will jump in every once in a while and add some comments here and there. Um, but I just want to show you the process of, of, you know, redoing a room and really redoing a room without having an exact plan before you jump into it. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy this video and comment down below if these are videos that you like to see and if you want to see a detailed walkthrough of my room because I can totally do that for you. So thanks guys for being here. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like these types of videos.
And the blessing in having just recently redone my room is that I really did a lot of decluttering at that time. So everything that I have in my craft room is really what I need or what I want to have in the craft room. And everything's pretty organized. So that also makes it very easy to um, move your room. So I would suggest if you're thinking about redoing your craft room or reorganizing, to go ahead and declutter first and that way you're only moving what you really truly want to keep in your room because I um, even though it took me a while the second time around I will say it was a lot easier because I knew exactly where everything was um, what took me a while was just really deciding what I wanted to move and where I wanted to move it and I think part of the struggle was that I really just didn't want to move things because I just moved it not too long ago but I'm glad that I did because as I mentioned before, I really, really like the setup and the way everything ends up. So um, I'm glad that I moved it. It was tedious at the time. And you'll see there's times where I take breaks and just kind of look around and I'm just like, OMG, because <laughs> I don't want to move stuff, but I'm glad that I did. And public service announcement, no yearbooks were harmed in the remake of this craft room. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of your comments about the yearbooks. In my first video, I asked um, if anyone else keeps their video, their yearbooks or um, like how you store it. And I received so many comments about why to keep the yearbooks. And um, I agree with every single one of you. I received messages that said, you know, keep the yearbooks because that's a part of your history. And I absolutely agree um some have even said you know they go through it with their grandchildren and their um, friends and some um actually said that they still meet up with their friends from i think elementary and middle school and they have like a yearbook reunion and they kind of get together and and relive memories so i thought that was really really cool um, but yes, I did keep my yearbooks and, um, someone had asked if I really needed to keep my yearbooks in my craft room. And I guess I don't really have to, but I did feel that since yearbooks are kind of, you know, to me, it's a memory keeping. I felt that it fit in my craft room since I have my scrapbooking materials in here too, as well as my scrapbook. So I felt that it really fit with the memory keeping theme. So I do keep them in here. Um, and uh yeah i was just I'm, I'm glad that i kept them i will not get rid of them they will stay there i will keep them forever so no yearbooks are are harmed or released <laughs> And I'm using my handy dandy measuring tape to make sure that when I do move any of the shelves, I actually do have enough room for the shelves to fit because the last thing I wanted to do was to move a shelf and then it didn't fit and I just used all that time and energy to move stuff. So I wanted to make sure that everything fit and I used my measuring tape to make sure that it would.
So I have a question for you guys. What is your go-to television show to have playing in the background whenever you're doing an activity that you don't really want to, you know, just sit and watch the show, but it's something that you have playing in the background? Mine, well, I have a couple. Um, right now, my go-to is Gilmore Girls. Uh, I love Gilmore Girls. Oh my gosh, Rory and Lorelai crack me up. Love them, love them, love them. Um, so right now it's Gilmore Girls. Um, there was a time where it was friends. I can go to friends every once in a while, but I think I am a little friends out right now. Um, Hocus Pocus was living in the background for a while as well. What are your go-to shows? I'd love to hear. And right now I am taking out all of the happy planners that I own. And just so you know, half of those were gifted to me by my friend, Sabrina. She hit the jackpot at one of the Walmarts when all of their happy, hey, happy, all their happy planners, like the Texas, the Texan in me is coming out. Uh, she hit the jackpot when all of their happy planners were on clearance. Um, and she was super sweet and hooked me up and I'm ever so grateful and I'm excited because I'm going to use some of these um, expired pages because they are um, happy planners that were out for back to school. So they started in June or July. So I'm going to show you how to use your expired pages in different ways. And that also includes how to use expired pages or books to make a travel planner. I did make a planner for my last Disney trip. It was not using the Happy Planner pages, but it was using um, a disc bound system. So I will post that video soon. I've actually had it recorded for a while. I just haven't edited it, so that will come out soon. Um, but I also am planning on making a new updated um, Disney planner for whenever my future trip is. I don't know when that's going to happen. It probably won't be this next year. It'll probably be in 2021. Um, but I will make that and I will share that with you as well. So if you would like to see that, let me know in the comments down below. And I did think about leaving this cube shelf here at the edge of the tables for a hot second. Um, I did like that it kind of served as an extra ledge and then I could keep my storage, um, you know, right there nearby. 
but I decided that I wanted a little more walking space in between when I walked into the room. And I also wanted to put that other shelf against the window so that it evened out the shelf that is already sitting under the window. And it could be one nice ledge that still allows me to see most of the window. It only covers a little bit of it. Um, but I really love the way this ended up um, looking. And at the end, I, that's my happy dance. Yay, I'm done. <laughs> at the um, end of the video, you'll see my full craft room. And the only thing that I want to add um, in this room is I want to get some cool curtains. Um, so hopefully that'll come soon. But I realized that my iPad was positioned to where you couldn't see half the stuff that I was doing. So here you can see my nice organized shelves. Isn't that so pretty? Like it just makes me so happy to see everything nice and organized and pretty. And I, I'm looking up at it now as I am recording this audio and it's still nice and pretty and it makes me happy. So I think that if you have a happy space that, you know, visually just feels clean and free and open, I think it helps to open your uh, creative spirit as well. So it's really important to have a craft room that feels good, at least for me. And for the sake of time, I did cut out a lot of this video because I was really going through the small items and finding the places where I wanted them to reside. So um, this is the point where I start putting up some of uh, more of like the decor type of items. And I am really happy that the way my computer is set up on the right side, um, when I'm doing the videos like the Cricut tutorial videos and I'm recording on the computer itself, I have that pretty backdrop behind me, which is the backdrop that I had in my very, very first video when I did the um, Canon unprinting or Canon unboxing, I'm sorry, the printer unboxing. Um, so I'm happy that I have that same backdrop with my stitch and my flowers and my choose joy sign. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so I pretty much just go through, you know, and put up the decor and um, put all the little items in its spot. And then here is the reveal, the craft room that I think is going to stay like this for a while because I have tons of space. Speaking of space, look at all that space on the floor that I have now. Um, the craft room has tons of space to work, tons of space to um, just move items and take pictures. That's exactly what I needed. Check this out, guys. I have all of my um, tools in the middle. I have my glue gun. I still have all of my shelving. I didn't have to get rid of any of my shelving. I think it looks very pretty. Even when you walk by, I think it looks like a nice organized craft room. I still wanna paint that black cube. Um, I was able to pull in my Recollections little rolling cart and pull that in from the laundry room. I'll tell you that story later. But look at that leg room for sewing. I have all my fabric here. I have a separate area where I can just like sit and glue things. I have my Ot light. I have, um, this is actually where my iPod sits to record overhead. All of the vinyl is right near me. I still need to organize that vinyl. Um, all my pins are right there and accessible and I can turn from the computer to my Cricut, to my Easy Press, to my cutting mat. Everything's in one spot. I love this room. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for being here. Take care. Bye.